Okay, so the Arduino just recently announced a new display, and it's not any kind of display, it's the display shield for the Arduino Giga R1 Wi-Fi board, which makes it very easy to connect it to the Giga board, you just snap it on the board. But unlike other shields, you don't snap it from the front, you actually snap it from the bottom, so you still have access to all the pins on the board. Once I power it up, you can see that this is the color display, the resolution is 800 by 480 pixels, and the judging by the viewing angles, I think that this is the IPS screen. It certainly looks very nice. So today I will show you how to display a static image on this display, the one that you see right now, and this is actually from my older video titled DIY Typewriter. I guess the title of the video might be a little bit confusing because it's all about using the Arduino and the next-gen display, I will put the link down in the description. You should definitely check it because it also has all the steps how to create the graphics. Anyway, let's go back to our Giga Display Shield. And it's called the Giga Display Shield, but it's actually more than that. Besides the display, there is also a touchscreen. It's a capacitive touchscreen that can process up to 5 inputs at the same time. Here is the connection from the touchscreen to the board, and you can see that there is some chip being used for the touchscreen. It also includes this tiny chip, which is almost invisible, but this is the gyroscope and accelerometer. The connector on top of the board is for the camera, that's the very same connector as on the board, but since you are using this connector for snapping in the shield, this is the way how you can still access the camera connector. If I flip the board, there is a microphone and this small RGB LED. And since usually the first Arduino sketch is to blink an LED, let's try to blink this RGB LED. Let's start the Arduino IDE, and the first things first, we need to first add the support for the Giga board, so I'll jump to boards, and here type in Giga. And as you can see, I already have this installed, but if you don't have the Arduino Giga R1 board installed, you have to click this install button, which in my case again, it's remove. I have installed a dedicated library for controlling the RGB LED, the library is called Arduino Giga Display RGB. You usually add the library by going to libraries and then typing the name of the library, but since I'm using a pre-production version of the library, I had to go to sketch, include the library and add the zip library. In any case, once the library is installed, I can go to file, examples, Arduino Giga Display RGB and there is one example called Simple RGB. And it's really a very simple example, but instead of blinking the LED, it's showing black, red, green, blue and white, with a 100 milliseconds delay, which isn't very much, so I think it will be blinking a lot, and for that reason I will probably increase it to maybe like half a second, so 500 instead. Then connect to the board if you haven't connected it already, and select the board from the drop down menu, Arduino Giga R1, and hit the upload button. And in a few seconds, you should see the LED on the display board changing colors. And that was quite simple, right? By the way, the Arduino is not controlling the red, green and blue lines on the LED. There is another chip that is driving the LED and it's communicating with the Arduino board using the i2c connection. So let's move forward and try something else, for example the touchscreen. There is also a library available for the touchscreen. This one is called Arduino Giga Display Touch and we have two examples. The IRQ means interrupt request, which means that anytime there is some touch event, it will tell it to Arduino and it will do something. The other example, the pooling one, means that you have to ask if there is a new touch event. So let's for example open the first one. I like how this sketch also fits on one screen. So in the beginning we are opening the serial communication, and then when there is some touch event, we are calling this giga touch handler function, which prints the X and Y position of the touched point, or points. So let's upload this to Arduino board and see what we get. And we see a black screen, which makes sense because we are printing those touch events using the serial communication. So anytime I press the screen, it will send a message back to the computer. So I just need to open the serial monitor in the Arduino IDE and make sure that the speed is matching the speed in the sketch, which is 115200. And let's actually make this smaller so I can also see the video and maybe make the serial window bigger. And now when I press the screen, I should see some values being displayed here. And so as I press and move my finger, you will see it will flood the messages showing all the X and Y points. And I can even use two fingers at the same time and it will show me that there are two contacts being made. Or I can continue like this with three points, four points, all the way up to five points. And as you can see, because the screen is quite small, it probably doesn't even make sense to have more than five points at the same time, meaning five touch events at the same time. So we've tried the RGB LED and the touch screen. Let's finally try also the LCD screen. And if you are guessing that we will need another library, you are right. This one is called Arduino H7 Video, and we have actually three examples. Arduino Logo, Arduino Logo Drawing, and LVGL Demo. So let's start one by one, starting with the Arduino Logo. 
as the name suggests, this one should draw the Arduino logo, which is being stored inside this img Arduino logo.h file, the header file. So this is the individual pixels and is being sized 300 by 300 pixels being drawn in the center of the screen. So let's upload this to board and see what happens. And indeed, in a few seconds, we should see the Arduino logo being displayed in the center of the screen. Let's remember this sketch because I will use it to draw our custom image, but for now let's try the other two sketches. The second one is called Arduino logo drawing, and this one also should draw the Arduino logo, but this time using the circles and rectangles, so using the graphic primitives instead of images. You already know the next step, and that is uploading this to the board. And we see a very similar logo, but this time being displayed on the white background and being drawn using the graphic primitives. You can see there are some imperfections, those pixel gaps inside those bold circles, but I'm sure that that could be fixed by drawing more circles. So let's try the last example. And this one is called LVGL demo because it's using the LVGL graphic library. You can see that we also have some logo in here being stored as a C file, but we have much more than that. So let's upload this to board and see what we get. And yes, this sketch is quite complex. You have the Arduino logo, but also some checkboxes, some radio buttons, a standard button with some kind of counter. This is the slider. It's tiny, but I can drag it around. And here is an animated progress bar. And I can also drag the whole screen around, but this is not very smooth. You can see a little bit of tearing. And that said, I would like to play with the LVGL library a little bit more. But for now, let's start simple. And that's again by just showing one image. I will open the previous sketch for drawing the Arduino logo and again there is this header file which consists of all the data for the individual pixels for the image being sized 300 by 300 pixels. And if I count the individual bytes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so 12 times 15,000, I will get 180,000 bytes. And again our image is sized 300 by 300 pixels, so we are storing data for 90,000 pixels, which means that we are storing 2 bytes per 1 pixel, so 16 bits per 1 pixel. And that's quite common format, but if you don't know it, it could be also quite confusing because 16 bytes is not divisible by 3, you will not get the integer value, you will get 5.3. So what usually happening is that 5 bits are used for the red channel, 6 bits are used for the green channel, and 5 bits are used for the blue channel, which ends up as 16 bits or 2 bytes. There is a link in the code for the image converter and it should make the converting the image into the C array much easier. And to make things even more easier, I will select the image which is sized 300 by 300 pixels, being the same size as the Arduino logo. So I'll drag the image in here and as the output format, I will select binary RGB565, so 16 bits, 2 bytes per pixel. I can probably check the later images to have the better quality and click the convert button. That should download me the bin file. Now the problem is that the bin file is a bin file, so it looks like this. And what I would like to have is to have the text representation of those individual bytes, something like this. So I will use another tool called file to hex converter to select my bin file and convert it into the text representation of those individual bytes. Copy output to clipboard and paste this content instead of the Arduino logo. I don't need to change anything else in there, so I'll just upload it to the board. And in a few seconds, we should see the rainbow image instead of the Arduino logo. So let's do one more step and that is displaying the full screen image. And that is the image being sized 800 by 480 pixels. Again, I have another video where I describe the process of creating this image step by step. So right now I'll just take the PNG image and follow the same steps. Meaning that I will use the online image converter to convert this PNG image into the binary RGB565 file. So convert it to the bin file. Then use the file to hex converter to convert this bin file into the text representation. Copy this into the clipboard and paste it into the Arduino sketch into this header file. You can see that now we have a lot more lines. And what I will also do is I will rename this header file by clicking this three dots and selecting rename. And let's call this image keyboard. Copy the name in the clipboard because I will use this in my main sketch file. So it will be img keyboard.h. And we need to change the size of the image because now the size is 800 by 480 pixels. And let's call this image keyboard. We will use the same name inside the display image function. And as for the position, let's use 0, 0 and upload it to the board. And finally, we can see our full screen image on the display. I mean, it's just an image, but it makes me quite happy. Mainly because I was hoping that one day there will be this kind of Arduino shield with display. And apparently today is the day. It also means that you will see much more content using this display on this channel very soon.
If you have any specific content that you would like to see, please let me know in the comment section. If you like this display or if you don't like this display, please let me know as well. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.